In this video, I'm gonna show you a simple way to bypass rote learning with the fastest way to learn new SAT words and their definitions, increasing your vocabulary and acing your next SAT exam. So by the end of this video, you're going to be able to learn words far faster than you currently can now, and it's lots of fun. These are the techniques that memory athletes use in competitions to remember savant-like amounts of information in record speeds. I've used them in competitions, I've used them to set Australian memory records, I use them in my everyday life, I train others how to use them, and anyone can learn how to do them. So today I'm going to show you how to do it, and it's a really simple three-step process that we're going to go through. So you've got this random list of words. You've got your SAT test coming up and you're looking at them going, I'm going to confuse all these meanings. How am I possibly ever going to learn this? There's no need to stress. It really is just a three simple step process. You make an image for the word, you make an image for the meaning, and you link the two together in a mini story. And once you start practicing this and see a couple of examples, it's going to make sense. So stick with me here and I promise it's going to get easier. So as we go through these examples, it's really important that you get as crazy as you dare. Really try and see the images as clearly as you can. Try and see them as if they were real there before you, but make them crazy and outrageous and fun. If my images that I make in stories, and this will become clear, if they don't make sense to you, pause the video, have a think about it, really visualize it, and you can even change them, come up with new ones following the same process. Um, the main thing is, is to get a little wild and not be inhibited, not, not feel like, oh, this is a little bit too crazy because it really is a really fast way to learn new words. So you want to try and capture the inner child, capture what, what it is that um, makes you laugh, makes you cry, and you want to use those in imagery to remember boring information like sat words and their meanings. So I just went online and I looked up the top 300 hardest SAT words and I've randomly chosen this list for us to work through as an example. Now it's important that you stick with me here for the, for the whole video because what is the best way to learn this is to see exactly how I would apply these techniques. The techniques are simple, there's only, there's only three steps to it, but applying it and understanding it is best done through a number of different examples. So when you first see a list like this and it's got abjure, arboreal, you know, and all these so on and so on that looks scary, there's no need to stress. In fact, it is just three simple steps. So the first thing you really have to do is you read the word and its meaning. And that's just the standard kind of what you do with any sort of, you know, learning of a word and a meaning. Then it's a good idea to also write out the word and try and break it down into parts and see, does the word either as a whole or parts of it, do they remind me of any images? Do any images spring to mind? And this is sort of like that, um, that game that people sometimes play and they say, I'm gonna say one word and you're gonna tell me the first thing that pops into your mind. So if I say, see, what do you think, blue, or you know, that it's like that game. So sometimes that can be by the way that the, the sound sounds, either in the word as a whole or components, and sometimes that can be how it's written. And we'll look at that with a couple of examples in a minute. So stay with me here, it's gonna make sense as we work through the examples. So let's take our first word for this, abjure, which means to formally reject a belief we held before. So first of all, when I look at the word abjure, I see two parts. I see the ab and the jure. And the feeling or the images that it brings to mind straight away is the jure bit sounds a little bit like jury, like injury. And the ab reminds me of abs, as in stomach muscles. So then I start thinking, okay, so what image could I make for that? So abjure, ab injury. I could see someone doing lots and lots of sit-ups until they finally go, oh, an injury. But then we need to link it to the meaning, which is to formally reject a belief that we've held before. So then I just need to alter this image a little bit. So I've got this person doing these sit-ups, you know, they're really diligent about it, they're going rrr, 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 crunching, and they've got, suddenly I've changed it a little bit. So I can see they've got this belief that if they do, you know, tons of sit-ups, they're gonna have these amazing abs. And they believe it so strongly that I'm gonna place a little necklace around their neck of someone doing sit-ups with their strong abs. But, so they're doing these um, ab sit-ups religiously and suddenly they get this injury in their abs and 
they realize that this belief they've held before that this is the you know this is the answer to everything is false and they rip off this religious icon of the sit-ups and they smash it down on the on the ground and they and they get rid of it so abjure ab injure abjure means to formally reject a belief that you've held before so that's all we need to do so the next word is arboreal and arboreal is of or relating to trees that's its meaning so i'm first just looking at the word and the meaning reading it getting a sense of it overall and then thinking does this remind me of anything you know what does it sound like what does it look like if i write it out if i break it into parts what bits can i see and i see that um arboreal the bore bit is like someone who's being a bore and the, then it's got that that art is the beginning of real bore real and then the first bit sounds like ah and to me that sort of sounds like a pirate going ah okay so i'm going to have um for that image if i made an image for that um what springs to mind for me and remember that this would be different for you and the first thing that springs to your mind is probably the best thing for you to use so for arboreal i see this kid and um, he's got a he's got an eye patch on because he's pretending to be a pirate, but he's also got a clipboard and he's learning all about. And because I've read the definition, I know that it relates to trees. So I'm going to see that the teacher is teaching them, teaching him all about trees. But he's this is a bore, and he's going, "Are you for real?" So a bore real. Now, if you had come up with this image yourself, don't worry, it wouldn't seem quite as abstract. It makes sense to me because that's what it sounds like and reminds me of, and I've practiced it a lot. But once you start practicing this, you'll start to see how quick this is and how quickly you can remember the definitions. So we have arboreal of or relating to trees. And I, to make it clear to myself, I've also, by the way, got on the clipboard in my head, there's a picture of a tree, you know, and this kid going, oh, for you for real, this is a bore, um, a bore. So the next one on the list is conflagration and it means a very intense or uncontrolled fire. And so the first thing I do is read the word and the meaning and sort of get a feel for it overall and then think what does this bring to mind? Does the word bring anything to mind, any images to mind or any parts of the word remind me of anything? And straight away I can see when I'm looking at the spelling of it, I can see con as in um, someone in a prison, you know, in the jail uniform flag as in a flag flying and ration doesn't really sound like something that reminds me of an image but it reminds me of ration as in not much of something um so what i do is i can see a con like a convict i can see a flag and then um something that has to remind me of ration and at this like a ration is in not much of something and at this point I start to see a picture forming when I look at the um, meaning which is a very intense or uncontrolled fire because suddenly I see that maybe the con has one match he's on a ration he's got one match and he wants to set this very wild fire light using the flag but now I don't see one flag I see many many flags because it's going to be an uncontrolled you know really big fire so there's many, many flags and there's this con and he's got this one rationed match. So con, flag, ration. And he lights it and he runs around and he's got one flag alight. And he goes around and he lights all the other flags until there's this massive fire, meaning a very large uncontrolled fire, conflagration. Pause the video, see it for yourself, check you can understand it and maybe modify the images if you can think of something that makes more sense to you. So we've got this making an image for the word and making an image for the meaning and linking the, the two together in a story. But how you actually want to really visualize this is almost like um, by the time you've finished putting the imagery together, it's like looking at a painting. So, you know, you want to see this painting in your head that you've built and that if you described what you're seeing in your head, it would describe the word and the meaning. And by doing that, it means that you're then just going through a visual library of words, which is much easier for us to recall as humans than just, you know, words, because words in, to humanity are actually a relatively new invention. So images have been around forever, whereas words have been around only, you know, 100,000 years or something. So, so we love images. Our brain remembers images. So you want to go through your list of words and end up with this list of uh, paintings almost that describe both the word 
and the meaning and you basically just have to look at that image in your mind and you can describe the whole picture. Uh, and what will happen in your SAT exam is, you know, you'll come across a word um, like conflagration and you go, oh my gosh, what does this mean? What does this mean? And then you go, okay, well, what does this remind me of? And you go, conflagration. And then you go, oh, that's right, the con with the flag and a ration. And it meant he lit them all on fire. So it was an uncontrollable wildfire. And then it will come back to you. And you'll be really surprised how easy this is. Now, the next word is denigrate. And that means to attack the good name or reputation of someone denigrate. Okay, so I can see den and then an I and then great. Great and den are pretty easy to me. Den I see like a den, like a cave. And great I see like a cheese grater. And then, so then I start to go, okay, so I've got some images for denigrate, skipping the I, and then I look at the meaning to attack the good name or reputation of someone. So then I can start to go, okay, so maybe I've got inside a den there's all these little eyes, as in, you know, the letter of the alphabet, little eyes. And they're all sitting there in this den, and within that group, there's a capital I, and he's got a good name, he's sitting there, he's a capital I. But then one of the eyes gets up and starts to attack this eye and, and attack its name. You know, you think you're so big, you're not so great, you're, you're, you're not so big, you're little like the rest of us. But the eye doesn't seem to be taking much, you know, much notice and this is angry, you know, making this little eye angry. So he picks up a cheese grater and he starts to grate down the good name and the reputation of this big eye to be a little eye. Denigrate. To attack the good name or reputation of someone. Again, I would just read it and I'd close my eyes and then I'd check I can see the image and I can say the meaning. Um, and then I would probably at this stage go back and go through all the words I'd learned so far just to check they're still sticking and I'm not having any problems. Okay, so the next one, innovate, to weaken or wear down. So hopefully by now you're starting to get the hang of it. You can start to see, we read the word, we read the meaning, we try and see if any images come to mind straight away or any subparts of the word bring images to mind. Then we make an image for the word, we make an image for the meaning, and we're linking the two together in a story. And remember, those three steps don't have to be in order. You might straight away see an image for the meaning and then you have to work out one for the, for the word and link it together. Or it might be that it's, most often for me, it's I start to get parts of an image for the word and that some bits aren't yet clear and then I can suddenly see how to change that image a little bit with a story so that it means the meaning. So innovate, to weaken or wear down. Now innovate, innovate. Well, N sounds a little bit to, like energy to me. So I was gonna see something looking energetic. And vate. Because it's got, when I look at how it's spelt, I see a V and then eight, the eight. So maybe it could be a vitamin, because it's that's the V part, and I ate it. So maybe to get energy, I ate the vitamin, innervate. Then I look at the meaning. The meaning is to weaken or wear down. So now I can go, okay, so how can I change that first image so that it's a little bit different, but now it means the meaning. So I see a picture of, like a cartoon picture of a body where you can see the esophagus or maybe an x-ray drawing. And this person has taken this, um, vitamin tablet to give them energy, to innovate them, and you can see it going down. But it's it's so energized and it's bouncing around so much in the esophagus that it's it's wearing it down and it's actually weakening the person and the person's going, oh I don't feel better, I kind of feel I kind of feel worse. So innovate means to weaken or wear down. Okay, lastly, perfidious. Deceitful or untrustworthy. Perfidious is kind of easy to me because the perf bit sounds like perfume and the last part perfidious reminds me of deciduous like a plant but it's poisonous or something so it, it brings to mind perfume and a poisonous plant perfidious and then I have to attach it to deceitful or untrustworthy so Suddenly, maybe I've got a woman and she's spraying this perfidious perfume on her. She's a little bit of an evil woman, you know, you can sort of see she's just 
she's just after something like maybe she's after money so she's spraying herself with this perfidious perfume and a man comes up that she's obviously trying to charm and he sniffs her on the neck and then he falls over dead and she takes his money and runs away perfidious she's deceitful untrustworthy So don't worry if this seems complicated. When you first start out, it can seem a little abstract, a little bit overwhelming. Remember, make the stories as crazy and outrageous as you dare, because that's what the human brain loves to remember. When I first started out, I was much slower at making images. Once you get quick at it, you know, you can read a page of new words and you have them with 99% 90, accuracy the next day. So it's definitely worth doing. Remember, you just read the word and its meaning, get a feel for it overall, see if it reminds you of anything, any images come to mind. Then you break it down, you make an image for the word, make an image for the meaning, and link the two together in a mini story. And you don't have to do that in that order. You can kind of, whatever comes first is fine, just make sure they're linked together. Um, if you do want to remember these words for long term, then I suggest using something like Anki is a really great software that you can get. I've got it on my phone. And what it is, is you can put in a list of words that you want to remember and their definitions. Um, or just as you come across them and each day it will flash up some of them to you and depending on how you answer in terms of I remember that easily I didn't remember that easily it will show them to you either you know the next day or four days down the track or whatever so it's really great I love it um, especially I've got a Kindle I love reading my Kindle because I can press you know what does this word mean and look it up straight away I straight away make the image remember it using the techniques we described today and then it can go in Anki and you can review it and it comes up a couple of times goes into long-term storage and then that all's good let me know how you go comment below let me know if there's other things that you want to learn if enough people want to do it then I'll make some videos for you if you like this video subscribe then you'll get to know when new memory tips come out head over to masterrecall.com Put your name in for the newsletter, it's exclusive and free and you'll get information that's only available to my subscribers.